My name is Julian Delabrange and I'm a contemporary painter and draftsman. I live and work in Harlebeke, Belgium. My background as an artist um, is actually purely art history. Um, I studied at the Ghent University and during my studies I felt the uh, affinity and almost urge to start painting once more. Ever since I started I was unable to stop. Whereas I believe it, it's, it's um, uh, very empowering for uh, an art critic to uh, actually work in painting or drawing. And also the other way around, when you are an artist, I think it's very healthy to not only write about your own art, but about art in general, because you are continuously um, re-evaluating your, your own vision and opinion when it comes to art. My inspiration for my art is, is very diversified. Um, of course, there is uh, my background as an art historian, which has a lot of 17th, 17th century uh, Baroque uh, influences resulting in the uh, chiaroscuro in the artworks and, and then there are also numerous abstract artists but also minimal artists, conceptual artists um, that are often um, indirectly present uh, in my works. So it's a very kaleidoscopic um, uh, approach towards um, art historical references but above all the, the main sources of inspiration is sometimes Things that I'm not so familiar with, for instance, uh, dance, theatre, or uh, film, or even fashion. Um, things that uh, I find incredibly interesting, but I don't have um, a lot of uh, experience or, or, or knowledge in. And it's um, uncanny to see that these uh, like unlikely sources of inspiration are most often the most powerful, just because um, they are so fresh and new to you. Um, to work with. There are uh, uh, numerous themes that I like to work with. It's of course um, uh, the human condition but also from uh, a different perspective. Uh, it's, it's the conflict with uh, our nature, our behavior, our, our surroundings. Uh, my visual language is predominantly figurative. Um, I'm very much convinced that um, it is perfectly possible for a painting to be very conceptual or even for a figurative painting to feel very um, uh, abstract or, or, or post-conceptual. And that's also how, how I like to think uh, about my uh, artistic practice, because the um, visual language may be uh, much more connected to uh, old masters or this tradition of, of the figure and of figurative painting. But in reality, it's, 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 uh, it's not at all, at all about just the figuration. The figuration is like an alibi to, uh, to discuss uh, these, these concepts. As a painter, I started with uh, oil painting, but uh, I, I switched to charcoal uh, when I was working on a specific series uh, in which um, I uh, wanted to emphasize this primitive character of, of mankind and um, how we're uh, losing our touch with this uh, primitive nature. It's the most intense black uh, that, I've, that I've seen and it, it's, it's very honest, it communicates what you've done. I developed towards this uh, technique in which I uh, use these very dark zones um, and, and uh, I push the dust of the charcoal across the surface of the drawing and then when there is like a, a mid-tone of grey then I start to erase um, certain parts to make them lighter. It almost fe feels as if being a sculptor, as if you're cutting pieces away in order to, to create your image. And it's, it's, it's very interesting to see when things are actually falling together, when the layers are uh, starting to um, get on top and, and all of a sudden the the uh, image uh, appears uh, throughout the layers of dust. And from a distance it feels very photographically, but when you come closer, you see how the picture dissolves into all these gritty, rough, uh, abstract shapes. The first uh, series that was very important to me was um, the series of The Passion, which is uh, 12 charcoal drawings after Pina Bausch. That series was what uh, defined my technique as you can actually see the technique emerge and becoming better and at the end it's very solid it's very constant it's very recognizable like the source material um, of, of Pina Bausch was actually something that I had seen many years before 
um, when I saw the, the Rite of Spring for the first time. And the Rite of Spring is actually about a very primitive uh, rite that we can no longer imagine it happening today of um, uh, uh, a female um, person who has been selected and who is going to be sacrificed. And it's, it's, it's uh, the horror, but it's also uh, a very uh, uh, beautiful scene because she's being adored the ent entire um, during the entire ride. This was something that I simply had to work with and uh, do it in a very, very honest manner. I, I started to connect thousands of uh, photographs, film stills, and started to cut the figures into new compositions because I was so intrigued how the bodies move. It was this vital energy. That there was so much life in it and also so much uh, intensity, pain, joy, all those things combined. Human Preservation was a series I created during lockdown because I was very much intrigued how um, our, the uh, preservation of our life, of ourself, was uh, diametrically opposed with our freedom. The series of the Forbidden Reproductions is also connected to the almost problematic nature of appropriation today. And the recycling of images, artists using image databases such as uh, Google Images or Stock Images or Pinterest. Most often artists tend to hide this, but I think it's very interesting uh, not to hide it at all and show that you are uh, indebted to it. We must question uh, the, the um, authors, authorship and intellectual property and originality. And then the question is, okay, so if you're indebted, who do you cite? For instance, with the series after Pina Bausch, I cite Pina Bausch, but there is also the costume designer, the theater uh, designer, there is the lighting, the photographers who take the pictures that I'm appropriating. It, it's very interesting to see how this concept of uh, authorship actually does not exist because it is very fragmented across so many actors. I used to think that being an artist was all about creating pictures, images, but in fact it, it's not. It's, it's about going beyond creating images. It's about creating something which is uh, a collectible object but has this imbued value residing uh, in the object. It, it becomes almost an, uh, uh, a sacred object in a way. It becomes something else than just being uh, the image.